Well, good morning. It is uh, August 10th. I'm uh, down on the beach here in Baja. You can see that we've got a little bit of uh, heavy waves from last night. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, the boat's all set up and I'm walking back to camp. Um, basically what happened is uh, we arrived yesterday probably about 11 o'clock in the morning and we um, got the camp set up. It was uh, fairly hot and humid and uh, we also uh, had some wind which really saved our bacon because there were several times honestly from the heat and humidity and effort I was ready to pass out kept uh, you know running into the shade and grabbing a, a drink or something like that so anyhow we got all set up we went out on a boat run caught a few kochi and a few other species and then came back to camp prepared the fish for dinner um, Jeff got a really nice corbina I'll show you a photograph here in a minute um, he caught it down there kind of near the boat and uh, anyhow uh, we went ahead and ate dinner and we noticed there were a lot of thunderstorms building in the night and eventually we saw a lot of really dark stuff coming from over here the north and the wind started blowing on shore so we put everything that we could really quickly into the tent or into the truck and I mean this, this was the genuine uh, Chubasco, the really hard storm, probably 50, 60 mile per hour winds. They took our tarp and moved it. We had it squared on this spot and it just dragged it over that way. But I grabbed it, had Jeff unhook all the, all the bungees, it even tore off those. And then I took the tarp and threw it into the tent, um, threw everything we could into the tent. And look at this, we still ended up with probably an inch of water in the tent, soaked all the boxes, soaked the sleeping bag. It was an absolute mess. We ended up having to bail into the truck and uh, slept as best we could. Probably rained just torrential downpour for probably an hour plus. Then it just continued to rain lighter and uh, uh, have a little bit of... Uh, uh, lightning that lingered on and on and on and then eventually probably 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning I think we were able to finally come out of the truck um, assess some of the mess that it made everything is just soaked and wet anyhow um, got our cot set up got the sleeping bags out and and tried to catch a few hours sleep before morning so now it's uh, a matter of cleaning up this messy camp and uh, trying to get things squared back away so that we can protect our ice and that sort of thing. Um, hopefully some, these swells have already dropped by about half. They were really rolling in early this morning. But you can also see there's no wind, no significant clouds now. So we're hoping to get everything set up and uh, hopefully make a run uh, early afternoon out to try for Dorado. Yes, we do. We got lunch. Bonita. Bonita. Uh, yep. Oh, his looks like maybe. Oh, yeah, it's Bonita. Here comes mine. No surprise, same thing. It's just a bigger Bonita. Black skipjack. Big black skipjack. That's black skipjack. Shoot. Ah. I wish they tasted like they fought. Came off. I saw it in midair come off. Oh, bummer. You just focus on that. I'll I'll get this taken care of. Oh, there we go. Nice. Nice.
Yeah. There we go. There we go, guys. Nice gap. That's a nice gap. Dorado. My line clear of the water. Yeah, right there. Love it. We double hook up a Dorado, guys. There we go. There we go. <sighs> Just reached over and did it instead. It is, it's a male. That is a male, yes. Okay, I'm hooked up. Don't know what we got yet. I got a splash on the surface and I've got a pretty firm pull. Oh my gosh. Maybe I have something foul hooked. But if it's Dorado, it's not clearing the surface. Come on. Yeah, I see green Dorado. Yep, little small Dorado again. Still green or are you ready to... Now he... No, no, no. He's green. There we go. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> Jeff got a little peanut on here. Whoa, don't want him jumping toward me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff's hooked up to a little Dorado. Make go where I want to go. This is a good fish. Yeah. Good fish. Right. Okay, we're coming around now. Yeah. How can we do, Pete? Can we get him? Got him. Well done, Pete. <laughs> oh, my. Not going anywhere. Nope. Nice job, Pete. Here. Boom. Nice gaff, nice fish. That's the success we wanted for this morning. Thank you. That is a really big needlefish. It's needle. I'm going to join the needlework club. Grab this needlefish around the throat and unhook him, send him back. I just wanted you to see this is a, a hogfish, Mexican hogfish. They also call it the Mexican name is Vieja, the old lady. And I just caught this. This is a barred pargo. Pretty nice one. Probably about four pounds or so. Beautiful fish. Nice. So he's going back to become food. And we're going to keep fishing here. And it is the hugest porgy ever. Monstrous. That is beautiful. Yeah, very nice. Oh, a double of gold spot. Ah, That's beautiful. We are going to uh, have cannot... sashimi. <laughs> that is a very nice flag cabrilla. Jeff's hooked up again. Got our mystery and fish coming up. Coach. That's exactly what it is. It is a, a large kochi. All right, Jeff's hauling on another fish. He is on his third hookup. Let's see what we got here. Here it comes. Looks like maybe Coach. Yep. Got that flash. Or maybe it's tail hooked or something. Or maybe it's, or maybe it's a 
Barn Maybe Targo. Like a big, nice, sweet <laughs> Sweet. Just lift it in. He's he's hooked well. This is a green jack, Cosinera. Same family as things like yellowtail and amberjack and all, but not nearly as tasty. So Pete and I have been going at this for a bit now. And this is what's called a Chino Marrow, which I think means Chinese bass. I think, because supposedly someone back in the day thought it was Chinese writing or something like that. Uh, in any event, it's a beautiful fish. Okay, so we're down at our favorite uh, Pargo Beach, and uh, unfortunately it does not look good right now. Uh, there's no birds wheeling around, there's no sardina jumping or anything like that. That's usually a bad sign, and there's bugs flying around, which is really bad. Look at the billions. Billions of little silverfish, dude. Wow, anybody need some bait? There we go. There we go. Look at that, folks. Nice fight. Nice fight. Here he comes. He's coming towards you. That's a nice fish. Come on, be it. Something cargo -y. Oh no, it's a, a what do you call? Corvina. Corvina. Nice big one, too. Corvina. Nice fish. Is this a little coach or is it a snapper of some sort? It is a yellowtail! These bugs are just killing me. I have an entourage of about 30 of them right off my left ear. They're not landing on me, they're just annoyingly close. Mutton hamlet. As big and fat a mutton hamlet as there could be.
there, but he's running. Coming hard. Trying to get back to the rock. Oh yeah, this is a nice fish. Nice fish. Big Corvina. Oh. <laughs> Woo! That guy's is a nice fish. Oh, on the little crocodile. That's beautiful. All right, well, we're down at uh, Pargo Corner again. We're going to give it another try. Fish on. Legit pull. Looks like Pete's got something of substance here. How about a bard? What's that? Bard. Bard Pargo. Very nice. These things don't give up, and we're on light line. This is the reason we call this Pargo Corner. Though, to be honest, most of those that we caught early on when we were giving it the name, we caught sitting on the beach at night. If this wasn't a good fish, it would be on the beach already. Look at this coming in. Look at this fish coming in. This is a barred cargo. This is a barred cargo. That is a barred cargo. Boom! Beautiful fish, Pete. Beautiful fish.
Finally. Nice don't uh, short thing cord in. Jeff! Corvina! There we go, fish on. Woo! Woo! Yeah, I think I've got this gill hooked. Yeah, he's bleeding. So we're gonna keep this one. It's a beautiful fish. God, I love the way they look. So bright and silver. Okay, so we're done now. Um, this was absolutely exhausting, <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> incredible Corvina fishing, and we are walking away from it. It's still going. It's still going. We, we, could, we, can't, we could get a lot more. We can't do any more. But we have to fillet what we have, get it on ice, and it's ridiculous. We're going to run out and of room. And they're big. They're, they're big, big Corvina fish. They're good, big fish. But it's so, just ridiculous. We got to stop. We got to get back and uh, and put an end to it. So yeah. twice in one trip in two days, we have had two completely different, endless experiences of fishing that we've had to walk away from because we just lit, hit the absolute limit. One interesting point is um, one of the very few other times when we've been in that situation years ago oh, was yeah. also Corvina. Corvina. Yes, it smaller was. Smaller than these. Much smaller Much than smaller. these. Much smaller. These but were also fantastic. Corvina. These are, this is the best Corvina fishing we've ever had. <laughs> fantastic. This, at this place, we might have to change the name from Pargo Corner <laughs> to, to Corvina Corner. Corner. Yeah, there it is. All right, so we're back on the Pargo Corner. We had such a great time with the Corvina yesterday that uh, we came back to give another shot today. So looking pretty good today. Hoping to do as well as we did yesterday. All right, got Corvina on. Look at him out there. He's jumping earlier. There he is, right on the surface. With any luck, we're going to let him go. Got too many of these. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. Fish on. He's going back, but I want to photograph him. Woo! Nice. I think it is possibly another really big, uh, really, really big Corvina. Big Corvina. It ran hard, on hard drag. Yeah. Oh, you does not want to come in. Come on, Pete. This is going to be like five pounds. You got this. Big fish. Good fish. Look at the size of this! That is a monstro Corvina. Nice feet, I, but you're already, so okay. Woo! Very nice, look at that. He's look going back. Foot. All right, boy, you're going back. You're going back.
God, it's a big boy! Hey, Jeff! He's going back. Let's go find out what he's catching here. <laughs> oh, looks like a big Corvina. Yeah. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. There we go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah! yeah get out of him and get him on his way. I don't know, but I'm hooked up. <laughs> We're just getting ready to release this fish. Kind of getting it going again. And in the meantime, I've got a live one over here. I've got a needlefish going. Whoa, and there he goes. And my needlefish is gone as well. Corvina! <laughs> mucho, mucho aquí, y grande, uh, año pasado, uh, día pasado, uh, cuatro kilos, grande, cuatro kilos, este es uh, pequeño, mucho, mucho, este es cocina, You want him? No. no. Okay. Lisa. Lisa? No. Corvina. Corvina. Oh, wow. This here is a porgy. Love porgy. If I knew that I could count on a couple of these, I might keep him. But I don't know that, so I'm not going to. I'm going to get this hook out of him and send him back. <clears throat> That's, that seriously is very much a keeper size. I've just got so much in the cooler now. And, uh... You know, there you go. Okay, so we just had a big flash of bait being chased right out in front of us. I pulled in my lure, threw it right at the spot where that had been. It was, it was pretty momentary, but I don't know that my lure even hit the water. It was engulfed by a fish so fast. There's my fish. Nice and strong and silvery. And not at all a Corvina. This is what's called a Jack Creval. The Mexicans call them Toro. Let's get him back at it. Nice little fish, tough. You can see they're, they're thick and meaty for their size. Very strong, very strong. Ready, guy? There you go, there you go, guy. So now here's something that's taken some drag. This is a little stronger. In fact, this is a lot stronger. We'll, we'll find out what it is, hopefully.
can see it's long and silver. Not the same as the Corvina, but it's long and silver as though the, the Corvina's cousin. Another sort of croaker. This is a California Corvina. You can get these on the Southern California beaches, but we're doing a nice job, or I'm doing a nice job on them here this week. This is my third up on the beach. I might have another Corbina here. Ripping a little drag from me. Really a lot of these down here this year. That is a big fish too for one of these. Yeah, this is nice. Look at that fight. All right. Come on in, buddy. On your way. Better, better. All right, look at this. We got birds all around us. That is awesome. You can see the bait ball is so tightly packed by the black skipjack. They're just crushing it. Jeff's hooked up too. Yeah, mine's a huge black skipjack. The pelicans don't even have to dive. Right. I got the wax wing going. Oh, not even, not even two cranks. Not even, you're getting blasted on. Oh, come on, get it, fish. Oh my gosh, they are just absolutely, I think the bait are coming over to hide under us or something. Oh, people, there are fish all around us. I can see them down there. And I'm tail hooked on this dude, I think, or he just wrapped. Yeah. Come on, come on. Okay, what I'm gonna try is casting not in the school of black skipjack, but elsewhere, in the hope of and see if I can't get a Dorado. That's right. Oh, I'm getting blasted on. Okay, here goes Jeff. You're right in front of it, get ready. That's going to be instant hookup. Go ahead. What you meant when you said that was instant hookup. Instant hookup. <laughs> oh, here's a Dorado. Here's a Dorado. Okay. Oh, it's multiple Dorado. Dorado on, no off, on, on, on. There we go. Multiple Dorado in the air! Jump. Woo! Jump. Okay, where, where are coming from? Right back by, by me, anywhere. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere. They're still going out there, that's good. I like the black skipjack keeping them all up at the surface. Look at that, guys, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Not the most ideal gapping, but I got my Dorado. Oh, look at him. Are you surface? I want to watch your strike if you are. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Woo! I am so cooked on this. I actually felt the bait fish hitting my lure and line. Open to divide up. Look at that! Two schools they got it broken into. Uh, I think I might have got black skipjack on that one. Woo! This is strong drag on both of us and we are just getting a hauled on. Look at these things. 
Look at how tight, like Jeff said, look at how tightly packed this poor bait is. It's just, they're struggling to get behind each other and avoid being the current one killed. The birds just come down and just, the frigate birds just come down and pick them right off the surface. How cool is that? I have never seen a sustained attack like this in all the years we've been at Baja. I've seen him attack, but oh, yeah, it's usually yeah. a super yeah, take, fast. Take it, take it. Oh, look at this. He spit up a sardine. Look at that, guys. Yeah. That's what they're eating. Perfect little sardina. Look at he's gacking up another one. He's gacking them up a bunch of them. That size of a, of a bait. Hopper lure, it's on the surface, it splashes, makes noise. <laughs> That's the point of it. One of your back hooks is, is rolled. Oh, it's loose. Yeah, it's loose. And here we go. Jeff is hoping that he can get Dorado that are kind of hanging on the fringes. Watch my face when you do it. Watch this, guys. Watch how quick. There it goes! Yeah! Oh my gosh! Woo! Take that with a skipjack. Oh, Dorado right in front of us. Look at those two Dorado. Look at those. Woo! This is popper lure. It's on the surface. It splashes, makes noise. <laughs> That's the point of it. Right in it. Right in it. And there I'm on. There he goes. And I'm on. It's a meaty kind of fight. They're, they're such tough fish. It's exhausting. I mean... No, please don't. Oh, no, I said it as soon as you release. Oh, as soon as I release, yeah, okay. That's the skipjack, right there. Upside down, but that's the skipjack. Gone. On. Black or Dorado? Dorado, love it, love it! So a couple of things to note, those little white flecks in the water right there, those are tens of thousands of sardine scales from the, uh, just it's basically an ongoing slaughter. Um, also the, if you watch the Dorado has gacked up a couple of uh, dead sardines and they're floating down on the right hand side of the frame. And then finally, uh, just watch the Dorado's tail. You'll notice that his, the lower lobe of his uh, tail is, is fractured, it's broken. and. Uh, if uh, you watch carefully a little bit later in the segment, you'll you can actually see that it's some sort of an older wound, but uh, kind of just interesting. Uh, you got to wonder what what was fast enough to catch the Dorado and at least try to to grab his tail like that. Anyhow, kind of cool. Here we are. Very very green has had almost no fight so far. This thing is not tired. There we go. Okay, all right. this is all yours? Hang on, got it. Okay, so if any of you guys have ever seen the BBC production called The Hunt, um, it's filmed off the west coast of uh, Africa and they are filming a huge school of sardines that's being attacked by predators. Well, this segment is almost a spot on identical segment. Well, minus the shark and the sea lions and the giant whale that eats all the sardines at the end. But the, but the black skipjack tuna part is spot on. Um, you know, where's, where's David Attenborough when we need him? He, he should be narrating this. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you.
There they are. Look at the fish rolling in that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So I couldn't resist adding a little bit more footage of these sardines. It is just amazing to watch them schooling. The behavior reminds me of those, uh, those videos of flocks of birds that are all turning and swirling in unison. And uh, uh, the other amazing part is the number of black skipjack that come up from the deep water to attack the sardines. Um, if you try to keep track, I, 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 I suppose there's really no way, but it's got to be at least 100 fish, and I'm probably being conservative. Amazing. So we just got back to camp after that epic Corvina run, and this is the thunderstorm that's developed at the back of Bahia Conception. <laughs> that was nice. Okay, that was cool. Check this out, guys. Breeding sea turtles. They are having the sexes out here on the water. Look at those sea turtles. Wow. That is too cool. So cool. So this is Sunday the 14th. It's our last evening in Baja. Um, we're kind of getting camp all packed up here. You can see that we got the truck pretty loaded. Um, got a few things that we'll have to 
wrap up rods flies and other equipment but no big deal um, gotta say that this has been the best trip ever uh, in Baja in all the years that we've been here um, one side note we saw that the uh, Pongueros had a lot of floats that were out in this area um, just off our camp and we didn't know what was going on so we went over and looked and uh, they were pulling traps big metal traps and inside they were just packed with kochi so one of the pongeros flagged us down and uh, showed us he had about the two of them had about probably 300 pounds of kochi they're going to take it down to the market in la paz um, pretty cool what they did for us though was even cooler so he hands us these scallops they are bigger than any scallops I have ever seen in my life. I, I can't even imagine the, the shell that those things came out of. Look at how big that is. That's just phenomenal. And they gave us three of them. I felt bad. I'm like, you're giving us your lunch. And he goes, no, no, it's okay. So they gave us three of them. We're going to cut these up and uh, have them with our um, Dorado. Jeff caught the Dorado earlier today. And uh, so we're going to have scallops and dorado for dinner. And it uh, doesn't get any better than that, man. <laughs>